Welcome back. Once upon a time, the state of Ricky Williams' mind greatly affected the state of the franchise in Miami, which has seen Williams depart unexpectedly twice in the last three seasons in 04 due to a shocking retirement on the eve of training camp and last April when the league suspended him for a year for yet another violation of the substance abuse policy. But here we are this April with Williams wanting to make yet another return to the league. But will the league have him? What about the Dolphins? And perhaps most importantly, is Williams stable enough for the task and the responsibility that comes with it? We sent our Terrell Davis to find out. A little bit more than a year ago, I didn't know what you know, what I was going to do, whether I was going to be in Miami, whether I was going to be here, what I, what I was going to be doing. And uh, I just tried to stay open to whatever, whatever came to me. You know, the team in Toronto, the Argonauts, really wanted me to come up there, and, and uh, my agent, Lee, thought it would be a good idea that I was still staying involved doing something related to football. Otherwise, he, said, he thought if I was here for a year that I might, never, I might never come back. The winding road that Ricky Williams has traveled has taken him to Austin, New Orleans, Miami, and even Toronto. But the place where he has found his most peace and happiness is right here in Grass Valley, a small community 60 miles from Sacramento in Northern California, where he lives with his family and teaches yoga. Right leg comes up, keep the leg straight, and exhale down. If somebody brought up your name in conversation, what do you think the first thing to hop in their mind would be? I think it depends on the, on the people. People that didn't understand, they would say, you know, he threw it all away just for some drugs, you know, pothead. There'd be some kind of joke about marijuana, and they would laugh, and then they'd go about their day. And people that don't understand, they would say, you know, they would say, I really can understand what he did. And so I think people either are, are disgusted or they can find some kind of inspiration from my story. We just got to ask you, man, do you still smoke marijuana? No, I don't need to. People look and they see, oh, he smokes, and they don't ever think, they don't ever practically think, why does he smoke? You know, people say, say no to drugs, say no to drugs, but they don't ever address why do, why do kids, why do people turn to drugs? And I think the main answer is stress, is stress. Well, if you learn how to deal with the stress, then the need to smoke goes away. I spend my time here, you know, in the setting. It's very clean, it's very nice, it's very peaceful. I meditate every day. I don't need to smoke. My life is very, for the most part, stress-free, and so I have no, I have no desire. Have you found your, your clarity and your peace? I've found a lot of it, but I know there's still, there's still more there. And I keep, every day I keep looking for more and more. The reinstatement process, take us through that. What's, what's going on right now? I sent my letter to the NFL. And then the next step is that next week or the week after, I have to fly to New York and I meet with a psychiatrist, I think, for, a, for an evaluation. You know, they check my, if I've been, following along with the test and talking to my counselor and doing uh, following all the rules correctly and then um, they I guess they send the information to the to the commissioner and the commissioner says yes or no Williams has taken the necessary steps to get back into the NFL but there are no guarantees and even if he is reinstated another question remains will he be playing for the Miami Dolphins they've been going through a lot they Coach Saban left, and they, they hired a new coach. So a new guy's in charge. Randy Buehler is a general manager, and uh, was well, the general manager that actually traded me from New Orleans. It's ironic. His stance is to just wait and see. You know, I guess they're saying the same thing with this guy. You know, you, he's unpredictable, so you don't ever know. Break the tackle, first down, 10, 5, touchdown, Ricky Williams. Loco, wow, Ricky. If I'm blessed enough to go play in Miami, wonderful. You know, there's the beach. There's, I, li I like my teammates, it's, it's a nice city, you know? And if I go somewhere else, then I'll have to try to find good things about that place that I go and be, a, and be appreciative and have gratitude. You get the call from the Canadian Football League that they have an interest in you going over there to play for the Toronto Argonauts. And what, what was your first thought of that? Well, the first time I heard about it, it was, a, it was something in the paper and it said that, that the Argonauts had put me on their list of players that they can go after. When I first heard it, I was kind of like chuckled, like, you know, like, I'm not going up there to play football, you know? And how was that experience? You know, they have that Sprite commercial, images everything, images everything. And for me, I had never been a 
really good at, at putting out the right image, you know? And so when I got to go to a place where image isn't as important, I saw that, you know, people accepted me more. People didn't think I was weird. You know, people thought I was actually normal while I was playing football. And that's, that's something I never really experienced before. I just woke up one morning and I realized that I was very happy to go to work. I couldn't wait to get to work, to see my teammates. And I was regaining that love, that love that I, that I used to have for football. And it really started to become funny. And I was out there just, just playing. This is also the home of where you teach your teacher and your student of yoga. yoga. Yes. And it's pronounced Shivananda. Shivananda Yoga. Yes. Shivananda. Yoga for me represents, you could say, my way out. I mean, I got myself into a, into a hole. I went to look for the answers and I found yoga. And because of yoga, I've been able to dig myself out of the hole. And I don't mean like a, on the outside, like being suspended. I just mean I saw that I wasn't happy. And then after doing yoga for a little while, I saw that and I can be happy. So it represents to me happiness. Describe happiness. Happiness is a state of mind where you don't have any stress, any worries, and you feel that everything is okay. To see love, to see God everywhere. You seem at peace here. You seem as though that no matter what happens, that this is really where you want to be, ultimately. Why do you want to go back and play football if this is what you ultimately want to do? It's a test. It's easy to be relaxed when you're off in the country, you know, and you're doing yoga every day, and it's and the, the environment is conducive, that's easy. It's a test to see if I can go in that environment and still maintain this peace and still maintain the strength. And then if I can do that, imagine when people see me, what are they gonna see? You'll be 30 this year, man. That's old for running. It's a nice back. number though. Spent the, the, the past three years really studying the art of healing. When I retired from football, both of my shoulders were, were beat up. I couldn't lift my arms past here. My ankle was tore up. I didn't feel very good physically. And uh, now I feel like a kid again. I feel my body, is young. I feel better than I felt five years ago. And so I, I think I still have it in me. What would you do if you're denied reinstate? I would do the same thing. I'd go home, thank God for my blessings, and go to sleep. I learned after last year not to assume anything. I'm at the point now where I, I realize that if I wake up every morning and I just do my best, you know, that everything will be okay. And if I'm supposed to play football, I'll play football. And if I'm not, I'll be doing something else. Terrell Davis joins us on the show right now. I don't mean to... Hold up, you, you, you break your chi right yes, now. Yes, yes, you're breaking it. All right, I'm back. Good to see you. Hey, Rich, it's good to be <laughs> back, man. I'm good to be back. Marshall, what's going on, man? How you guys doing You today? learned a lot up there. I did, I did, I did, I, I like did. That. And you know what I thought, though, Rich? Uh -huh. The same thing that everybody else thought, right? They thought that, you know, Ricky is a strange guy. You know, everybody has these stories about this guy being just a stranger and, and a weird dude. He's got the beard, he's got the dreads. But I walked away thinking that he's no different than me or Marshall or yourself. And uh, I think he's got a bad rap. And I think he's one guy that, he, as good as he is, mm -hmm. he struggles with being a celebrity. You know, he just wants to play football. That's all he wants to do. And then when he gets the attention, he shies away from that. But I think people would disagree with the idea that it's all he wants to do is play football. Well, it seems that he has so many other interests and so many people that, that, that play football think of the Super Bowl. That is the end-all and the be-all. You know, there's obviously family, there's religion, and then there comes football. I mean, it, it doesn't strike me that that's what that's the order in this this guy's mind. You you really believe he's, he it, wants to play football? It was just obvious that, that he had a problem with the social parts of being a professional football player. And I think that now that he's found himself and he knows exactly who he is and where he is with himself, marijuana is not important to hide all the all the things that he had inside. Mm -hmm. And and now he seems like he wants to go challenge it and find out if he can continue that piece in the game that's a lot different than what it is in Canada. But, but he's found that. He's found out, found that in, in yoga. I mean, he used to smoke marijuana because the, of, to alleviate the stress mm -hmm. and the anxiety of having to deal with, you know, public criticism. That's what he was dealing with. So now he doesn't need that anymore. He's found his, you know, his fix with yoga. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that right now he's ready to come back. And just because he does not walk the same line as we walk, I mean, he is a little, you know, different sure. in, in some some sense. But no, he's not. He's like everybody, everybody else. But Miami and Grass Valley is two different cities. That, but he, 
Grass Valley is, is an interesting place. I mean, it's rolling hills. It's like being in Kentucky. Right. And he has this house that's right on the farm and everything else. But uh, I believe that Ricky's ready to, ready to come back. You and do. Ready to play. Yeah. You think he, he can come back and be what in the NFL? I think he can still come back to the form that he that he had when he really? left. 1,600 yards. Absolutely. I no think kidding. so. You know, he hasn't played in a while as a running back. We know, Marshall, you need time off to rest the, the body and heal up a little bit. So I think he's definitely ready to come back and, uh, and make a big impact in the, in the NFL. Good to see you. It's a pleasure, Rich. Terrell Davis, yes. more, more limber than he was when he came up <laughs> to uh, interview Ricky Williams. Very good. So to come on this program, we meditate on the, the best day two draft picks in the National Football League from last year.